Ja, na dobra. Hopefully, we're good. So. Today's gonna be a bit of a weird stream, I think. Because I want to try and implement an algorithm which I've never used before. So it's probably gonna be really, really boring. But we'll see how we go. Before that, though, I need to uh, do something else. And get Stream, and then I've got stream. Just doing a bit of Git shenanigans to start with, and we'll get to the good stuff. Should have the console stuff. This should exist separately. Yeah, perfect. The fog stuff is fine, but it's um, it's very slow, and I'm not sure I want to keep it as much as it adds to the atmosphere of the game, or could add to the atmosphere of the game, I suppose. Um, let's want to my stream stuff. So. My hope is to implement uh, binary space partitioning so that I can make random maps a bit like this one. And the idea is that it basically takes up the whole space of your map and divides it randomly into lots of smaller sections and then builds rooms out of that and joins them together. Which looks pretty good if you're building a space station, which is what we're doing. Rooms divided by corridors. So, to get there, we'll need to add an extra thing to our generator. So they use this thing called a leaf. So I guess we'll follow along with the tutorial for now. Construct new x, y, width, and height. x equals x, y equals y. Actually, well, I wonder if it's better to do this with vectors. Yeah. equals vector new xy 
and size equals rec dot new with height. That. And then this also has a split method. And I suppose that we've got a few other properties in here we have to set. So we don't actually have to set these if they're null already, it's just that I want to. <laughs> uh, room is the rectangle inside this leaf. Uh, room is null, I guess for now. Halls is an empty list, because we have no halls yet. And then they've got a constant, main leaf size six. We'll see what that looks like. So, if left child isn't null, or right child. We've already split. So let me pick a direction to split. And then split H. And we've got an RNG, yeah. And float is greater than 0.5. This right. and size that and width over height is great. how this looks for clarity because it looked weird to me otherwise. The idea being that we do one or the other or both. So if the height is taller than the width, and the height, oh fine I'll do it as separate variables because I'm getting annoyed now. So basically what they're doing is they're saying if the if the room space currently is larger in one dimension by some extreme than the other will split in that direction because it should be. So it's like if you had a long thin room splitting across that divide where it's thin would just result in thinner rooms which does not look particularly well balanced so they're going to split it 
into two segments that are a bit nicer to walk through, I suppose. I guess that's the idea. And if it's not an extreme, we can pick a random. Nice and simple. So, our max down here on this line now. And the thing that I often end up doing when I do this sort of stuff, I do end up sort of implementing line by line analogs to an algorithm. And for the most part, it works. The only thing you have to be careful of is if you're doing things with floating point numbers that you check whether or not it needs to be an integer instead. And if it's an integer, you have to floor it or seal it or uh, round as appropriate. Uh, split H backed with, but usually you could do a lot. If signs. There's a lot of different random number generation pieces going here, so I might need to look into how those are done. Their code samples are coming from uh, Flixel, I believe. So, gotta see what they're doing about that. Leaf. Chances are something's strange here around what the semantics of this are. Right, so they have this whole extra thing here to implement this bit. Generate random numbers between a range of stuff. Because, see, knowing that, I can implement this properly now. We actually have a start and finish value, so... Um, So really we do that because we actually can say this is the maximum value rather than treating it as a uh, the range we want to traverse instead. They've got this sort of absolute thing going on so it's like if these two values are distinct then you can do that. Oh, range equals max minus min leaf size. Although the thing the thing that you have to decide, I suppose, is whether or not you 
make the changes on the fly and then have to remember those changes when you're implementing the rest of the algorithm or not. So the question is whether or not the max value here gets used for something else. Um, for example, if the range in this case is less than the leaf size, then return false. We can't actually do it because resulting area is too small to split anymore. Otherwise, we do that and then if split h then left child is equal to the leaf dot new x dot y Ugh, okay fine having these as vectors was a mistake x, y equals y, uh, width equals width, y equals height. Ah. x, y equals y. Get those there for convenience. Now we're good. And split. Right trial is equal to leaf.new. Oh, I see. So we're basically saying in the space, we're breaking up these into two different distinct bits. And that changes depending on whether or not we split horizontally or not. Because then you do that. And then you add the split here rather than here. And the width minus the split. Rather than here. And return true. So Just double checking things. I think we're good. So once you have that basic bit of algorithm stuff going on, we can go back to our generator. There's a lot of stuff in here actually. I don't want to use it. So we'll make a new one. And we'll need this in a bit. And then we we'll basically go. Leaf.new 
zero, zero, map size, map size. Let's say the map size is 40. So levels are 40 by 40 squares. And then we go leaves dot and root like that. And then we did split true. While we did split That's what we're doing. So oh, this is a horribly formatted page. Ugh, that's just terrible. Can I There we go. It's still horrific, but at least I can work with it. So now we basically go um, for leaf and leaves. No, we don't need that then. Do a thing. Right, so clearly I need to be able to get the left child, and the right child. So if if got left child now. And leave top right now. Then so then we know that well we basically say does this need to be split because it's too big? That's We need the width and height, so we can add those in. Alternatively, we have a a large chance, that's seventy five percent, of splitting it. So um, RNG dot float is greater than zero point twenty five. I guess you could tune those numbers, but. Split. Then, if we successfully did so, then leaves dot add leaves dot left child and the right child. So I guess we create a um, a breadth first search of leaves that we split. do now is actually do a little test bed for this which is uh, in it Mm. 
So that gets me all the leaves. And then static draw. And this is basically for if in leaves. And canvas.brick. Leaf.x, leaf.y, leaf.width, leaf.height. The word leaf will stop looking like a word by the end of today. And color.green. And for graphics for color canvas. Update and then we can go um, generator. All right, that's a uh, static and leaves don't expose their size yet, or their position even. So that actually looks pretty good. Um, let's um, go with uh, uh, canvas dot resize. That's the only downside of doing it like this is that you forget to run the right thing. But there you are, that's a DSP. So you get this room and this room and this room. Okay, so that's that's that. And if I do it again, I should get a different looking room. Or not. Ah, but this time I do. Now let's tune the size of this a little bit. So max should probably be more like 10. Nope. There we There we go. Just checking if there's anything else I need to know. Whether or not I made any particularly bad mistakes. I don't think I did.
would have been nice is if I could do something like convert for keyboard tent if keyboard space dot just pressed then do that. Oh yes, I have to actually uh, clear the screen. Because it looks a lot like it's ignoring the minimum size. So, get me a range between the minimum and maximum. Ah, that's better, okay. one, I guess. That's quite mesmerizing, to be honest. If nothing else. for a bit more variation in sizes and stuff. Okay, I'll stop playing with that for now. Right. So then the create room uh, goes on here. Create rooms. So if left child standard optimal or right child standard optimal, do a thing, otherwise don't do a thing. Left child is not up to now. 
I see, so this this recurses down the whole thing and creates rooms for all of the leaves. I'll be honest, I probably have to pass in a world for my engine. Context, context. And then we do the same thing for the right and slide right. Right, so what are they doing here? Um, so, I right, see, so we divide it into regions and then we randomly pick a size within that region. So, room size equals vector new. And it's basically three to width minus two. No, oh, that's uh, <clears throat> like that. And then I'm doing it. Height minus two. Because we're that's uh, the three by three is our minimum. So and then we need to basically put it somewhere in that space that it will fit. Size to x minus one um, and g dot int. Oops. Um, height minus room size dot y minus one. And then we need to do something extra. Because we basically end up doing this bit. And then we go for y in room pause dot y to no Uh, 
Yeah, but they've they've done the minus thing already, so we can actually take that without. Uh, Xpass.y. So then that gives us our room space for tiles. Like that, probably. I guess rooms could keep an eye on where they are in the world, if that's useful. But not sure it would be. Well, it might be. then you basically do if well our wall is equal to x being equal to room pos dot x or x is equal to room pos dot uh, max pos Pause dot x. I actually have to change the range here. That. Or y is equal to and pause dot y or y is equal to max pause dot y. Because then if it's a wall, it's a wall, if it's not a wall, it's like that. Solid if they're like that. Well, I suppose for rendering purposes, class rect. Dome doesn't have a rect type, and I wonder whether it needs one, but. Well, I suppose you could just use a single vector. Now I think about it, because vectors have four components. Um, come back to this stuff. I just want to do the diagnostics to make sure that this stuff is correct first. So, and rooms of the vector new. We still need this though, because then we can go room pause dot x, room pause dot y, room. Uh, maxpos.x, maxpos. 
Well, actually, no. You you can do room size dot room size dot length. Like that. Draw. And then. Room dot z double e. Room dot z. Like that, and then the leaf needs to provide me the room that it's got. Here you have to do root like that. No, it's not a field. There we go. Suppose the question is, why does it do that? Suppose it would be leaf dot plus leaf dot point plus. Right, that's a bit odd. Okay, um, let's put this and do that and then go if leaf dot dot room
All seems a bit odd. I suppose if we take this away. That's a bit more interesting. Okay. How do they connect them? Shall they each leaf that has child leaves has a hallway that connects its children? Same for the right, and then do left is equal to null, and right is equal to null. Return null. Otherwise, if 
from left is equal to null. Return else if right is equal to null. Return right. is greater than 0.5 turn left else turn right It doesn't say... Oh no, this would still be in the same spot. Right hole. Left, right. Int left dot x ah. fine, we'll do a type for it. Which is equal to x plus width. Well, actually, no, left is just x. That would be right. And then, do I have to do a top and bottom? It doesn't look like it. Width is the zig, height is the w. These all seem quite immutable, but the top is the y, bottom, y plus the height. Just checking. Being able to override the vector class like that is a new feature, so I check it regularly. So now rng.int left. Uh, 
let's make these shorter. We'll probably be writing them a lot. L dot f plus one. L dot right plus minus two. And Right top and bottom. So then for our width, it's equal to the point two dot x minus point one dot x. Height y. Is that if w is less than zero? I wonder why that would happen. If height is less than zero. Then holes dot add right dot new point two dot x point one dot y math dot oh w dot abs one I guess we're picking the orientation of our holes. Otherwise, if the height is greater than zero, so it's not uh, zero. Then do the coin flip. Then we're doing something in a similar manner. She looks very similar, so why are these different? Because that just looks like lazy coding to me. Um, do you want to... ah, they're not, not, not exactly the same. Okay, that's fine. They're just very, very similar. Two, two, one, one, like that. And then, like that. Else, because uh, I'm still zero. Both of those are like that. But 
tabs and one. Oh, well, this is just really inelegant. Width is greater than zero. So then we go through the same dance, I guess. If height is less than zero. And if the height is greater than zero. And let's do something else. So this one is one, one, two, and two. I need the coin flip. Mustn't forget the coin flip, it's essential. same thing but this time like oh, ah Except that this time, that's a one, and that's a two. Otherwise, instead, we actually literally just do that. Oh, but no, but it's a uh, doggy like that. Otherwise, if the H is less than zero, then just do two, two. Oh, I mixed up the things already here. Whew, it's going to be annoying. This was horrendous, I hate it. Mm. If 
unfortunately it can be rectified a little bit. I'm making this height there. This H. Apart from these ones, I suppose. correct order to get the result you want. My whole machine has decided now is the right time to tank. For fourteen, nearly there. And you're right, it doesn't. That doesn't work. <laughs> Why is that? The gist is there, just the position is wrong.
Could probably doesn't say how to draw stuff. Let's just double check that this is correct. Left top, right bottom, left right, like that. And then heights and widths are calculated correctly. Two, one, two, two. Two, two, one, two. Two, one, two, one. Two, two, one, one. And then two and two, like that. And then we go one two one two one one two two one one two one one two one one and then one using the width, and then 2-2 two, two using the height, and then 1-1 one, one using the height. So that all looks correct. Um, Most likely it's to do with the random generator thing doing something strange.
So then it's random run dot call random run dot call random run dot call That's so strange. Plus Y plus because that's definitely wrong.
um, let's double check. And write H check that. Feels really strange. Did I like... I, might, I must be just messing up the rendering or something. Do this. I can take that out. I can take that out. And then take that out and see what happens. Aha! There we go. It was just not drawing that bit. So these should always be connected in some way. Um, I don't need to be printing now. not perfect. There's a few bits that feel like they're one-off, but in position. But that makes more sense. It, uh, the points were coming from the rooms, and the rooms were not having the right dimension positions given to them, so... You get weird behaviour.
plus one minus two plus one minus two all the way around. I did one bit of dimensional modification. I just don't remember where. Yeah, maybe. There we go. That, that looks a lot better generally. That's a weird one. Still not perfect though. They don't quite meet when they're supposed to. No, it doesn't work. I mean, there's always the chance that their implementation is wrong, but I don't like to assume that.
I think I understand why it makes two legs now though, because it's doing a dog legging type manoeuvre. Uh, does that fix it then? Not quite, but close. Very close. You can see, like, here what's going on, you know? Unless the rect is wrong. Um, this one rect. That doesn't quite appear to be the case at all, does it? Because it's... Oh, that was the wrong one. Um, Yeah, it happened here, see? Right, because it, it picks a random point on each side of each one to get them to join up. It's just not quite doing the full join. Sorry, I'm sort of struggling today.
which is not ideal. It all matches the thing. Looks like it broke it. Anyway, thank you so much everybody who came by, if anybody came by. Um, I'll be back in the new year. I probably won't be streaming again until then, so have a good one. <laughs>